Okay, good morning uh, once again. Everybody, welcome back to our second lecture, BC314 on media and technology. We were just starting to talk a little bit about um, websites, our websites for our church and ministry, how uh, we can go about setting it up, just some thoughts and guidance on it. So let's continue from where we paused and uh, All right, so when you come to um, building the church website, what are some of the things you need to think about, right? So you think about, okay, what kind of website do you want to have? Uh, and who are the people you're targeting? Do you want to have something that's very contemporary, very, you know, that's very attractive, very fancy? Do you want to stay with a, a classic? look and what are you trying to do right so for us at apc like when we were thinking about this and of course um you know our, our website's been there from i think um i don't know a long time ago I forget when maybe from 2004 or something uh, we uh, it's been there and then of course it's gone through you know updates continuously so but anyway our main motivation was we wanted our, our, you know, the way we are thinking about our website is it's our website is actually a repository. That means we want people when they think about our website, they say, "Hey, I need to go to the website because I'll find content that I'm looking for." So our website is not just um, a brochure for our church or ministry. We want our church website to be a repository for Christians all over the world. So that was our motivation, that we're going to um, make it a website that, that, that provides content for believers all over the world, and we're going to provide it for free. Now, if you go to some church websites, you know, to buy a book, you have to pay some money, uh, to listen, to buy, to download a sermon, $3, buy a book, you know, $15, $20, something like that. Like people charge different things. Uh, but we said, no, we want our website to be a free repository of you know all our sermons everything so from you'll find all of our books all our, our sermons from 2004 till now so about 20 years of sermons and of course in, in the early days we, we only did audio recording and then slowly you know we started having uh, early days 2004 it was only uh, audio recording and sermon notes we did not even have powerpoints then slowly after that, I don't know which year, but some other years, you'll have audio recording, sermon notes, PowerPoints. Then slowly after that, you'll have videos. We started, you know, yeah, having videos. So it all came later on. But 20 years, or 20, yeah, 20 years of content is available. And then, uh, so all our sermons there, um, um, the videos, other content that we're adding, right? So. Uh, that was our motivation, that we will make it a content repository, a repository of content, Christian content, sermons, books, whatever we have, make it available for free. Now, that was our motivation. Now, somebody else may say, well, I just want my website to be like a brochure. I just want to give some information about the ministry, about the church. It's mainly informational. That's fine. Uh, it can be content. We are providing resources. Sometimes people may use their website to raise support, like, you know, you want to mobilize finances or volunteers, that may be the thing. Some people may want to use their website to sell products that people come and shop for, you know, whatever they, people are selling, uh, Christian books, uh, music, uh, other things. Or sometimes you can use your website to get action, you know, um, register for conferences, register for events, register for uh, uh, various things. Now, uh, our motivation was mainly content. Now, we do provide information. That means we do let people know, okay, a little bit about our church and things like that. Uh, and we do uh, have some information on where people can support if they want to give. Uh, and also, all registrations for all our events also happen through our website. So we kind of do all this, but this is like top. Our main goal was it should be the content. People should come for the content. 
So with that as your objective, once you define, okay, what do I want to do with my website? Then you can, you know, decide and whom you want to target. So our goal was let's keep it plain, simple, classic, right? So you don't find anything very fancy on our website. It's not some glossy look and feel. It's very simple. It's you know, here are all the menus, here are all the information. It's a, it's an old classic look. Uh, and that's intentional. We just want to make it easy for people to navigate the website. Um, and then you can think about the uh, what, what people call as information architecture, how you want to lay out your site map, how you want to lay it out. You know, make it simple, make it very intuitive, right? So even some a new person coming, um, they will know, okay, here's your homepage. If I want to know about the church, I go to the about us section. If I'm a visitor, I go to the new visitor section. If I want to know about the events, I, I, I can go here. If I want to know who are the people leading this church, I can go to the team page. If I want to know, if I want to contact them, I should be able to get the information. So make it very intuitive. You know, what is the information people are looking for? It should be very accessible, right? What are the things? So, okay, people are looking for what time is the Sunday church service? It should be accessible because they want to come to church, they should find that information. Or oh, where is the church meeting? Uh, which location? What is the address? They should be able to find that. So make it very simple, very easy to use. Right? And then uh, use colors and graphics that are very pleasant. And there should be no error, zero error in the, in anything, you know, the graphics. So if there's a spelling mistake somewhere, it makes it look bad. So have somebody check it. So we, we have a QA process that we try to make sure you know, now and then sometimes some mistakes slip in, but you know, we try to keep it clean, like no, no spelling mistakes. And keep the content updated. So uh, literally every day the website is being updated. Everything is being, and all information is taken off uh, contents. Because if it's old, uh, people think like, oh, it's not been updated. I can't trust the other information on the website. So keep the content updated. If you have links on your website, they should all be working. And uh, as I mentioned, it should be very intuitive, very easy for, to navigate the website. Um, uh, some other useful things you can do is when, when people come to your website, try to get their contact information, right? So have a simple form that they can just enter the name, email number, subscribe. Right? Something very simple. Don't make it complicated. Give me your uh, full first name, middle name, last name, you know, grandfather's name. Just don't collect. People won't have time to enter. Just something very simple. Enter the detail. They can subscribe. They can be added to your database uh, and so on. Then, of course, you can connect to social media accounts. Uh, which are, uh, you know, if you have these accounts, we'll talk about these a little later, social media. Uh, make that, you know, link to that from your website. And then, very importantly, optimize your website for search engines. So basically, you have a website, but remember, there are literally zillions of websites all over the world, right? And your website is one among so many. So, you have to make your website, uh, you know, optimize your website so that when people search, they should find you. And there's a way to do this. There's this, um, uh, you know, and there's a way to do it. And so uh, you can get the help of people who know how to do search engine optimi optimization to make your to optimize your website for search searches. That means you use certain keywords. You know, what will people search for when they want to look for your website. So example, um, uh, the way we, we talk through this is, OK, if somebody's in Bangalore, they will what will they look for? They will look for spirit-filled church, Bangalore. Like if somebody wants to go to a spirit-filled church, let's say spirit-filled church. Or if somebody wants to go to a word-based church, they say, I'm looking for a word-based church in Bangalore. Right? Or if somebody wants you know, a charismatic church, let's say charismatic church, Bangalore or Pentecostal Church, Bangalore, or whatever whatever they're looking for, you know? So you think about, these are the phrases that people will search. So that phrase, those phrases must be in your website for your website to show up, right? So in all the content you do, you're very thoughtful about what words you're using in your website. And also important is your uh, URLs, the, the, the URLs. They should, the, the, the links that you make in your website should also include those keywords, right? So somebody searching for online church, they should, uh, you know, they should be able to find it. Or uh, free Christian books, they'll search, they'll find it. Right? 
so you you, you create you optimize your website for uh, uh, these search phrases by putting including them in your URL. So that's another trick. Also, make sure that you add your church locations to Google Business Listing. This is free, so just go to google.com/business and you add your address of the of your church location, church office, so that it'll show up on Google Maps and it increases you know the chances of people finding you and this is all for free you don't have to pay for this they just verify your address so you add your uh, church location your church address when people search they should they should find you or your church office on google maps etc just add, add it there it's for free they'll just verify your address and uh, another important thing to do is to Cross link. That means from other places in the web, in, in the in, in uh, on the internet, you should link back to your website. Uh, somebody who understands search engine optim optimization will, will will explain this to you. But basically, uh, the more links you have linking back to your website, the ranking of your website goes up. Right. So that means you will be uh, ranked higher. So you need to cross link back to your website from other places and you can use other directories, yellow pages and so on to link back. Now, uh, in today's world, with the rise of um, artificial intelligence, uh, the way search is happening is, is beginning to change. So we need to adapt to it. But this is all still valid. It's all of this will still work. right? And then one more thing is Submit your website to Google Search Console. Again, this is free. You go to uh, this URL, Google Search Console, um, uh, use, using your uh, Gmail, go there, and then you link your particular domain, your website domain, submit it to Google Search Console. So that will happen. Google's, uh, what they call it as crawlers, uh, it's their um, um, uh, search engine. You know, that's how they, they read. Basically, Google has software, they call it crawlers, that goes and reads everything on every website, or almost everything on almost every website. So the crawler crawls through your website, it indexes every page, looking at all the content, and it ranks your page, indexes it. But if you submit here, then it will pick up your website, index the pages in your website, and that's what makes your website visible right, to other people when they search. And you can also, if you want to make your website accessible from other parts of the world, which you know you can do, um, uh, so that when people anywhere in in the in, in the world search for certain key phrases, they can find your website. And I'll show you that. Right? And, um, and 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 so that means you know your content then becomes visible anywhere in the world in the English speaking world if your website is in English. Keep your website some basic things. Keep the content updated. Keep it increasing. Uh, and uh, if you have a lot of content in your website, build search into your website also, and um, you know, make it easy for people to find content by grouping it and so on. Okay, so let me just give you uh, a little demo of what we have done. So let me go back to the browser and let me share the browser. Yeah. So. So all this, you know, we've been working on this. We keep working on this constantly. Uh, I just want you to see. Now, can you? Sorry, I forgot what I was sharing. Um, stop. Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you uh, can you see my screen, my web, the web browser? You can see just the web browser, right? Okay. Right now in Bangalore, right? So we will do lots of different searches. So let's say, as I mentioned, you know, somebody's searching. If somebody comes to Bangalore or somebody's planning to come to Bangalore and they're looking for a spirit-filled church, so they would type "spirit-filled church Bangalore," right? That's what they'll type in the search. Uh, and of course, uh, Google does its search. It shows out some of the churches. That these are churches that are listed on Google Maps. And then first in the list is All People's Church. Right? So we've optimized our website to be number one. So 
if you the, the, you know so you obst uh, so so you look at it all people search in Bangalore spirit filled right so this is this is important you rank number one so that people can find you right I'm not saying that everybody who sees it will come to church but at least they find this church right so let's do something else you know suppose somebody wants to type uh, a word based church in Bangalore what will they see so they type word based church and all people search is right on top right so again we've optimized our website for people to find us here right, right on top or if people search for because that's what we want people to find us for charismatic church in Bangalore again there are some other churches listed but you'll find if you see you know we're listed right on top first in the search results page right that means we optimized our, our website for such searches uh, searches um now you can also do other searches let me open a new browser window here suppose uh, uh we, somebody wants to search for an online online church uh, yeah, online church okay. so here again you see we are listed we are right number we are second there's some some uh, i think this is from us uh, us church that's number one we are number two here local and it's of course the church the churches are localized life churches from the us but APC is, you know, we uh, look for this region in our local, we are number two in the search results, right? So it's been optimized for this search. Um, suppose somebody searches free Christian books. Right? See, um, we've been optimized. So our website comes up even for free Christian books. APC, you know, there's another, somebody else is here, number one. But number two and number three are APC websites. So our books, our website has been op optimized for this search also. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. If you search for uh, online Bible college, APC Bible college, number two. Right. So you have uh, some online Bible college. Somebody has one. Moody Bible Institute is in the US. But APC Bible college, number two in the search results so we optimize our bible college website for ranking on top right in the search so this is how people are going to find you like if you optimize your website for these searches now let me go to the us so all this all these searches were happening as though i'm here based in bangalore so let me go to the us google.com slash geolocation is uh, us that means I'm changing my geolocation to US. That means I'm going to search now as though somebody would search in the US, right? So if somebody searches, um, and I'm just using some known searches. So if somebody's searching for a book uh, called Ministering Healing and Deliverance, okay, they search. Look, ABC comes up. So in the US, our website comes top for this title. Ministering healing learns. This is our book. Comes so if somebody's searching in in the U.S., that's what they will see. So even in the U.S., uh, our APC books and videos are being made visible, right? Like this, you could um, you know uh, search for. Uh, so example, we have a book called Code of Honor. I don't know if that will come up here, but let's see. Code of Honor. Okay, that's actually a movie. And yeah, there's all movies that yeah, so it's it's like it's overpowered by the movies, but anyway. So let me go to New Zealand, google.com slash uh, geo uh, geolocation New Zealand. So suppose somebody's searching in New Zealand. So, so now I'm searching as though I'm living in New Zealand, and here again, you know, you can search. For example, if I search, do the same search, ministering, healing, and deliverance. Again, in New Zealand, if somebody searches for healing, our APC website will come. Our book will come first. Right. So, 
So anywhere in the English speaking world, our church website has been optimized to rank highly on certain things. It's not going to rank highly for everything, but certain, you know, based on the content we have, right, which is like the books we have or um, uh, things that um, so on. So let's see and think of anything. Uh, wonderful benefits of praying in tongues. So like this, there's a lot, I'm sure there's a lot of content on this. So let's see if to APC comes anywhere here. Can I go up and just, okay, so APC comes here. See, even for this search topic, wonderful APC website is there on page one. So uh, you can search this way and you will find. So just a little um, example where, or if I search for free Bible college, I don't know if we'll come up for this. Oh, yeah, we do. So even for that free Bible college, APC is ranked number one. Uh, number two is some Bible college Baptist, but it must be in the US, uh, something, and this is one in India. But you see, like, APC Bible College is ranked second after this Christian Leadership Institute. So even for, for this, so, you know, so students will be searching for free Bible college, or if people search for Bible colleges in India, um, I don't know. Okay, we are on the first page, but we are kind of, I don't know, six or seven below. But we come up on the first page, and people search for Bible colleges in India, they'll find us, right? So uh, let me stop sharing. So uh, this is the benefit of having a website and optimizing it so that when people search, and literally, you know, they could, if they search from anywhere in the world, uh, they will find you. Right? And uh, they will use your content. So, in some ways, we uh, we are able to actually serve people all over the world. Um, so, let me just show you. Uh, you know, we can track the traffic that comes um, from all over the world. Let me just show you quickly. Uh, at least last year's data, I think this year must be just getting started. But, um, let me, mm, so this is our analytics website. So that's actually connected. Is this this thing is monitoring all our church websites, uh, different websites, and um, so. Let's go to the dashboard. So, you know, this is telling us um, it's monitoring. You can see my screen. Yeah, the analytics. Yeah. So, this is we're looking at APCW.org website. So, you can see in the last 24 hours, uh, we've had um, 4,256 visits. Um, and you can see people from different parts of the world. There's somebody from the US right now, and this is from Ethiopia. This is from somebody from Iraq is on our website right now. They've been on the website for the last 25 minutes. Somebody from Pakistan is on our website. Our website Pakistan. This is from Nicaragua. This is Pakistan, India, US. So this is monitoring the church website. And it's, it's telling us, you know what, so people are actually downloading all these resources from our website. And uh, you can look at the visitors, um, you know, so this is just um, for the last day, but let's see, for example, uh, let's see for this current year, that means um, for this year, uh, that means we are now in February 7th, so from Jan 1st to till today, We've had almost 60,000 visits to our church website. And let's see the locations. They have come from almost all over the world. So just in this last, um, you know, uh, last from month and a half, we have people from almost all over the world come 
of course, most the highest is there from India. Uh, you've got uh, quite a number from the United States, but almost every country. Right? There are some countries which are white, which we haven't had any visits. But otherwise, from almost every part of the world, they've been visiting our website using our content. And if you look at 2023, um, you know, if you say, I want to look uh, all of 20, what happened in 2023 from Jan. Um, from Jan 1 to December 31, 2023. So we've had, um, so for last year, uh, for 2023, we've had um, about 337,000 visits um, from all over the world. And you see the distribution, like almost every country in the world, people have been coming to the website and using it. Okay. So, so we are, we are literally able to serve people all over the world through the website um, without having to pay any etiquette to go to any of these countries. People are coming and using these resources. Okay? And uh, you know, so um, that just um, just to share that with you. Let me stop. Okay? And similarly, uh, for our website, we can monitor you know, uh, what people are downloading. So uh, all our books that we have, um, we can see the admin through the admin console. We, we have a count of how many of these books have been downloaded. And we can see literally, uh, I, forget, I forget what the number was, but um, let me remember, try to remember this. Last year, we had uh, um, 556,603, so almost half a million downloads of our PDFs uh, of our books. So, you know, that's just keeping account of that. So, that means, imagine, you know, uh, this is digitally, right? That means almost 500 plus, 550, thousand almost half a million copies of our books were distributed online that means we did it's not the print online people have downloaded that many books from all over the world and they're making use of it so in one way our vision for our church website is being being fulfilled we wanted to make it a content repository and people are actually making use of those resources globally right there's only the books now similarly we can track the sermons you know how many MP3s are being downloaded? How many people are listening to the videos? Um, we can track all of that. I mean, they, they, these are real numbers, right? Because they're coming to our website, downloading the books, or downloading the sermon MP3s, and making use of that. So, um, any questions, any uh, comments, any thoughts here? Or as far as websites are concerned, uh, any Questions you have about you know, how how can I build a website or whatever anything anything that you've seen uh, discussed so far right it's very and interesting pastor the especially the analytics helps us to understand uh, the reach and people being blessed. It's so wonderful to see, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. yeah. And it's very encouraging, you know, and then especially I sh we share this back with the IT teams. Like, I see all the work you're doing, you know, how it is uh, blessing people uh, all around the world. Um, that people search. And, you know, people may be searching for different things. They come, they land on the website, and they will start uh, using the resources. Yeah. Okay. So um, we'll just 
just uh, do one more topic and then we will stop. Um, we will just talk a little bit about email. So our next topic is about emails. Uh, we'll just do this and then we'll stop. So we talked about websites. That's one way to engage people. Another way is emails, right? Remember, oh, previously, you had to write letters, go to the post office, buy stamp, put stamp, stick it, post it, if you want to connect, uh, contact people. But today, emails are so easy, so quick, uh, we can connect with people. So it's so important to create a mailing list. That means you need to get people's email IDs, right? So right from beginning, we used to start collecting email IDs. So of course, with people's permission, please give us your email ID. We can keep you informed of what's happening in church. And it used to be manual. I so, you know, I remember still back in 2000, you know, two, three, four, uh, after Sunday, Monday will be my email day. Like I will manually send an email to 30 people saying, here is a sermon outline. Here, what is it? You know, uh, then it became 100 people. Okay, manually click, you know, uh, I mean, not 100 times, but I'll put them in small batches. Uh, you know, and then send emails to keep them informed, all those things. So just be all manual of those early years. And then after that, we automated the whole thing. Right? So now I'll just show you. But email is a great way to keep people connected, inform them what's happening. Uh, you know, and if you need, if you, you can use it for many things, raising funds, updates, encouragement, so many things you can use emails for. But uh, some things is uh, use it carefully. Don't become a burden like every 10 minutes when email is coming. You know? Like, you know, so we have a rule that we follow. Uh, maximum, we want to send out two emails, broadcast emails from the church to our congregation. Uh, two plus one. That is no more than two emails in a week. The plus one is if there is a real need, you know, maybe there's a funeral happening or something like that then that's the plus one. But otherwise, the rule is don't send more than two emails a week to the people. And the people don't want to get bombarded uh, with emails. So that's kind of what we follow, because we, they shouldn't think we're just randomly sending emails. So first is you know build your email list. So we have now, uh, you know, when we collect, we have a simple form. People enter the email, they subscribe. So we have it on our church website. It goes into a mailing list server. I will share that with you a little later. And then, uh, so they can subscribe to your weekly sermon emails and so on. And of course, we have to give them the option to unsubscribe anytime. Uh, or there is a visitor form, FTV form online. They can enter their name, number. We also collect the mobile number if they'd like to give it to us. And then, you know, we, we collect that information. So with their permission, basically, you're collecting the information, uh, you're also, if people want to volunteer, again, they're providing their mobile number, email, they sign up for whatever. So you have sign up forms, different forms on your website that you can use. And then you're collecting their email. And it gets goes into that particular list. Right? So now it's kind of automated. Before I had to manually put it in various lists. But now it's on from our website, it goes to the email list. And I'll show you. So what now, once you collect the emails, you can send emails, do it regularly, but carefully, don't overuse it. Uh, use graphics and images, but they should be small size, so we don't want to you know, burden people's bandwidth, the usage, data usage on their side. So um, keep, the rel uh, keep your emails very succinct, short, uh, error-free. If you want to link back to your website or social media, you can do that. Uh, keep your emails mobile friendly because nowadays many people actually check their email on their mobile phone. So be mindful of it. It should it should show up nicely on their mobile phone as well. Uh, use uh, exciting subject lines, but keep it factual. Don't you know? Don't create something that's not there. But uh, subject lines should be interesting. So then only then they will read the email. Uh, or limit yourself to one or two, you know, we do two plus one, that's what we follow. And uh, also segment them, that means you can have, okay, men, women, youths, 
um, you know, so if you want to target your email, okay, you know, if you're having a men's conference, no, you no point in sending that information to all the ladies. <laughs> you only want it to go to the men. So you know, you should be able to target your audience as and when needed. Uh, pastor can send a note from time to time. Um, uh, it's good to send it on midweek because Sunday they would have heard the announcement. If you want to remind them, remind them around Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, if you send it. Uh, yeah, on Monday, it's it's not, and then of course give people the option to unsubscribe. Right? So uh, we have what is called as an email list manager. That means we have a, it is again a free open source software. It's called PHP List um, that we have set up where we manage all our email IDs and through which we send the email. So you can set up your email there, press a button, and it'll go to. You know, 20,000 people. So right now we have, I don't know, between 20 and 30,000 people in the email list. Um, uh, and it's, and it's, it's segmented, so we can always target. If you want to send only to people in Bangalore, we send it. If you want to send it to people in India, we send it. If you want to send it to Christian leaders, we can send it. If you want to send it to men or women or whatever, you know. So it's segmented, but totally, though, the whole database may have some, uh, I think, a little over 20 to 20,000 some email IDs. If you want to send it to everyone, we can send it. Uh, and so, so this list manager manages all of that for you, and uh, through this, we can send it out to people. Um, yeah, uh, just one last sec section, and I'll stop. Um, the um, I will show you the email list manager, you know, later on. When we talk about the software that we use, I'll show it to you. But this is this is what we use, phplist.org. It's free, and uh, you're hosting it and running it. I'll show this to you late, later. Uh, internally, when you're communicating among between staff, between people who are working in the organization, of course, we prefer face-to-face -face communication. But if you cannot meet in person, send an email. We also use email to document conversations. Use short, meaningful subject lines. Keep the content crisp and short. Don't write long essays. People don't have time to read. Uh, be courteous. Use polite. Uh, you know, use please, thank you. Use be very polite in your emails. Uh, be professional. Only where it's needed, you highlight or you underline. And uh, be careful. You know, not to use bold and caps too much because it's emphasizing something and it may come across. Uh, you know, in a different way. So how you write the email should be important. All right, so those are just some quick thoughts on email. So we use, uh, so in uh, from APC, we have every Monday or Tuesday, we'll send our sermon emailer that goes to several thousand people where we keeping them informed about the Sunday sermon and maybe one or two events that are happening that week. So that goes out every Monday, Tuesday. It'll go out, I think, I think goes to about 6,000 people. Just think just about the sermon, encouraging them to listen to the sermon. So that's, we call it the Sunday sermon email. And then if there is a particular event happening, we will send a reminder, which will usually happen on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, an email goes out. So basically, those are the two kinds of emails that go out on a weekly basis. The second email may or may not happen. It just depends if there's an event or not. Or it could be an event, an announcement about an event coming up, you know, several weeks later. We will send an email out. Um, uh, the third email is an emergency email. If there's an emergency, like a funeral or some other thing happening, then we will send. So there will one email will definitely go out, the Sunday sermon email. The second email may happen. The third one is an emergency, which we don't normally, it doesn't go out every day. Okay. okay. Any questions about email communications? So remember, all of this began in a very small way. That means way back in the early 2000s, I just had like 30 email IDs. I used to manually send it. Uh, but now we use a mailing list server to send out thousands of emails. Uh, it's all automated, right? So you start small, start with what you have, and then you will grow into something like that. And you can get the help of IT people to manage things for you. Yeah. 
right? So let's pause here. Uh, we'll continue this next week. I hope uh, these are giving you some useful thoughts. And as uh, your churches and your ministries are growing, uh, you can start using these uh, for your ministry. Yeah? Could somebody close in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for uh, this opportunity to learn and understand more about technology and what you have given us. We pray, O oh God, that you'd be able to continue to use it according to uh, the wisdom that you have given. And we pray that you would um, uh, help us to use this, O oh God, and help us to think strategically in every area of our ministry, Lord God. We thank you for this time. Thank you for this learning. We humble ourselves once again in Jesus' name. We pray. Thank you, everyone. We'll connect again next week. Talk tomorrow. Bye.